In this video, I'm going to explain how I beat one of the most challenging Super Mario World levels I've ever played. Ships Made Cities is a notoriously difficult and lengthy level from the Super Mario World ROM hack Elephants and Snakes and Crocodiles. The level features four rather long rooms, each with their own mini-boss and unique gimmicks. The ROM hack's creator, Morsel, is well recognized for designing some of the most creative, intricate, and brain-melting levels in Kaizo, many of which entail a degree of puzzle solving. This one is most certainly up there. This video is part of a new series I've been doing, so if you'd like to see more videos in this style, then please let me know in the comments what levels or ROM hacks you'd like to see, and don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can keep making these. The very first room is based around on-off switches and this invincible homing board that chases Mario. The bullet cannot be killed or jumped onto in any way without it killing Mario, so I'm forced to misguide it and dodge it for the entire room. The first on-off switch must be hit five times in order to drop a spring that I'll be needing for the next jump. Here, I need to bait the thwomp down and mislead the bullet before bouncing on the thwomp to get over the spike wall. Jumping to the left will send the bullet away from Mario and buy me some time to get across the switch bridge. When holding the jump button, Mario can run across open gaps in the floor that are one tile wide. This is a basic Super Mario World mechanic that is used in most Kaizo hacks. This bridge takes it up a notch by adding different lengths of gaps that can be flipped using the on-off switches. This has to be done in a hurry, otherwise the bullet will catch up and I'll die. Here, I just let the bullet get as close to Mario as I can, jump to send it up high, and run to the edge of the bridge to try and gain P-speed so that I can actually make it to the thwomp. This final obstacle involves a homing thwomp that will fall when it's directly above Mario. I made some mistakes in this section that caused it to go very messy, but the goal here is to hit the on-off switches enough times to drop a P-switch from above so that I could get to the door. I first tried this mini-boss by sheer luck. Every time I bounce on Lemmy, the fire bars reverse their direction and increase in speed. I thought that maybe he'd be modded further to always appear in the middle section, but I was wrong, and so the fire bars ended up being in an awkward position blocking me from actually hitting him. Again, this was some pretty sloppy playing on my behalf, but had I have died, I would have gone back to the beginning of the previous room and have to make my way back to the boss just to have another attempt. Beating this boss gave me my first checkpoint. Room 2 is a water room with a horizontal layer 2 smash. The way I learnt this room was by taking my time and keeping an eye on where the walls would stop and start. Having a plain black background made this a little difficult because there are less visual cues that I could use. Halfway through the room I can see the door leading to the exit, but there's a switch further up that I need to hit in order to gain access to it. Unfortunately, getting there involves being chased by this Rip Van fish the entire time. To get back down safely, I found that hugging the wall on the opposite side to where it smashes from was safest because it gave me a little more time to get by. With careful swimming, a bit of luck and some good timing, I made it back to the door after around 25 minutes on this room. The mini-boss for this section is a boss bass that swims across at Mario's vertical position. An infinite supply of throw blocks on the walls can be used to attack it, and by carefully avoiding the fire and taking my time, I can hit it four times. Remember, if I die here, I go all the way back to the start of the previous room. Room 3 is disgusting and uses one of my least favorite mechanics in Super Mario World. This coin snake is completely controlled by Mario. The snake will always move in the direction that I press on the D-pad, except that it won't go backwards on itself. So if the snake block is moving to the left and I press right, it will continue to move to the left. Basically, I have to control this snake block while controlling Mario, while jumping through boo rings, all whilst making sure that the P-switch doesn't run out, otherwise the blocks will turn to coins and I'll die. Keep in mind that each P-switch lasts for approximately 10 seconds and in this room, the camera is tied to the head of the snake block. I'm going to leave the input display on screen so you can see how it all works. 
I found this room to be easier if I didn't hold the run button because it would mean that I could outrun the snake block and potentially move it the wrong way. I had to figure out the most simple pathing I could so that I could make it to the end and thankfully this meant that I could skip some of the p-switches along the way which meant less turns. Surprisingly, getting on top of the snake block for the final ride to the door was really tough. The mini boss for this room is a magic Cooper with four cannons on the walls, all firing magic at Mario. The magic must hit the yellow turn blocks on the ceiling to spawn a Cooper, which I can use to destroy each of the four cannons. I died here quite a few times, and yep, each death took me back to the beginning of the snake room. Fun. Eventually, I had a good run, and this room took me about an hour. We did it! <laughs> room 4 is the final section. It is by far the longest and most challenging of all the rooms in this level. This room's gimmick is the skull blocks that constantly spawn above Mario. The frequency of these varies throughout the room, but finding a rhythm for the Yoshi flight in between when these blocks would spawn was the goal here. There's a lot to unpack in this room, so let's get to it. Taking any damage at all will instantly reset the room. I have to use Yoshi's tongue to grab each of the Koopas through the walls and spit them precisely into the on-off switches along the walls. Remember that I hit a P-switch at the beginning, so I have to move quickly before the coins turn back into solid blocks. These bullets fire at the most inopportune times, but that's okay. This one, I have to eat with Yoshi to buy enough time to get through safely. The skulls speed up here, but doing a zigzag motion through the room like this avoids the chucks and the blocks just perfectly. I always took a moment to have a quick rest here, then kept going to avoid the hammer bro. These sea mines spawn at a particular spot forcing me back down, but if I fall back too far they'll respawn and I'll have to avoid them again. These hammers sucked. Coupled with the skull block spawning awkwardly meant that this section killed me quite a lot. Once I found the rhythm for the hammers and blocks I can quickly get through because the longer I spend there the more likely I am to die. Getting past the chuck wasn't too bad, it was just the positioning and timing of the skulls that made it tricky to navigate. Here I must ditch Yoshi or these chucks will fall so quickly that I'll die. Now for the descent. This p-switch timer is incredibly tight. Unfortunately the blocks are spawning both above and below Mario now so if I fall too quickly I'll die and if I fall too slowly I'll run out of time getting to the door at the end of the fall. Somehow I made it into the door with barely a frame to spare. Now for the final boss of the level. This one was friendly but stressful. All I had to do was bounce off of the bullets and grab throw blocks that I needed to throw back at it. Twirling the bullets meant that I wouldn't take damage and some of these looked pretty close to actually getting me. This was the first time I made it into the door after about an hour and a half being spent in the previous room and again, had I have died, I would have been taken all the way back. Oh my god, dude! This is so stressful! <laughs> <laughs> GG. What a monstrous level. If you'd like to see my edited playthrough of this level for the reactions, I'll leave a link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and as always, here's the winning attempts from my playthrough without any commentary to put the whole level into perspective.